All right, welcome to the May 17th, 2017 Finance Committee meeting. It's a beautiful Wednesday outside, looks like summer. We haven't had spring, but we've got a little bit of summer right now. So we'll call the meeting to order, and we'll go with a roll call. We'll just start over here with Joan. Fonts. Glenn Lawrence. Dave Hurd. Bernie Pigeon. Stuart oh, Worthen. Stuart Novick. Oh, excuse me. Oh. <laughs> All right. Huh? All right. Very good. Um, we'll ask for any citizen participation. And seeing none, we'll proceed. Town administrator is not here, but we'll proceed on to finance committee matters. All right. And 2017 Springtown meeting. Uh, like a little discussion on that. Joan, you watched that from the I did. sidelines, and so what did you think? We had a few changes this year as far as the presentation went. The presentation and the what, reading of the, um, was it Dominic? Right. Uh, did an excellent job. Mm -hmm. um, I miss being there, of course, but. Well, we missed having you. Thank you. Missed having you. Mm -hmm. um, Uh, well, yes. it's only the second one that I've been at, but All right. uh, I was anticipating a very lengthy evening, and uh, I was surprised at the brevity, how quickly we went through everything. I only have the meeting before that, the fall meeting, to compare it to, but it did seem like it was much more streamlined, much more efficient in terms of how they used the time. Well, if, if that was true. Which I would think long term, I would think if you can condense the amount of stuff that you have into a more manageable amount of time, you're probably more likely to to draw more people out for it. I think when you're faced with multiple evenings, and right. it becomes very demanding for people to participate. Well, it's going to be very interesting with the passage of the Zero Quorum next time, see if we actually get more people showing up. That would be good. Yep. Bernie. I think for all that happened in the background prior to actually having the gavel come down and having the meeting come to order, uh, we did extremely well. A lot of things were happening last minute, very fluid, yet we were able to present it all together in kind of an orderly fashion that obviously impressed some people in our viewing audience. Good. All right, Stuart. I was there so I can't comment on that's why it went so fast right? maybe that's it <laughs> I don't recall participating prior to that <laughs> Dom David I thought your your introduction was good in that you covered some of the mountains that are out ahead um, in terms of our financial obligations and the fact that we have not had passed the uh, um, right. the override um, but I, I'm really disappointed in the finance. I mean, we got the financial thing and the handout for the financial thing. I got it when I went down the table and got picked some of the things off of the, the table. It's just is a, a, we are not clear and we're not doing our job in totally understanding and being a partner in the development of that. And thank God Derek is good, honest, he isn't trying to slip anything over on us, but if we got a TAN manager in there who uh, was like a prior one, I mean, we'd be a lot worse off. Um, so, I, I just thought that, that uh, we should have known more about the numbers and more of a participant in how the numbers were put together. Tom, do you think we've become, because of the expertise, and Derek and our trust in him, somewhat complacent? Well, I mean, I think we're hiding a lot of stuff that no, nobody really knows about. We don't look at the I mean, head count. We don't look at the, um, the fact <clears throat> that we're eight unfunded liabilities in both the benefits and the pensions and what that means. I mean, if you look at pensions, we're $85 million behind, and we've got until, when I first started here, which was five years ago, the, the goal was to be okay by 2032. Now it's 2040. And if you took and you had to get that plus the, uh, the 
OPEB. Um, employee benefits. OPEB. That's another 35 million. So you're up to $120 million. And if you said, okay, I want to get, get there by 2040, and it would be 22 years, and you look at the present value of a million dollars 22 years from now, it could probably double three times maybe in 22 years. So Depending on the interest we, rate. we should have some program mm -hmm. that says we should be putting back, not only covering our current employee benefits, but also putting back towards this goal of 2040. I, I don't intend to be here to see if you get there. But <laughs> <laughs> well, you do intend. Yeah. Just, I was wondering about the <laughs> phraseology there, Tom. I, I, I think they should. I, I think we should realize, and we're not different. I, I don't know about the the uh, pension part of it, but OPED is the only town, I guess, in the state is Wellesley that is up to date on with their OPED and put money away to anticipate that. But people are going to live longer. They're going to demand more. And the other part of it is, in every employee contract or recontract, we've got to make an effort to cut down in the pension costs. Have pen people retire later, have them contribute more, and have fewer employees. I mean, that, that, that's how we got to make it. It's, it's a very difficult, difficult dilemma that we're faced with, and all communities are faced with. It's not just Wareham. Yeah, no. As you said, it's it's all the communities, not only in this in, state, in but state. throughout yeah. the country. Yeah, it's a it's a serious problem. Well, in the past, we have focused very much on getting our stabilization fund to the level that's to that's get our point. bonding in better in, shape. Indeed, mm -hmm. and now perhaps we should now refocus. We have one. We've established a goal, and we've accomplished it. It was a critical one, long term, and now we move on to our other goals of necessity as you point out, because indeed the, um, the liabilities of companies all over the country are, enor are enormous. And we have obligations we have to meet. And like those yeah, of us who have gray hair here and those who have uh, are, are there no requirements about how much, you know, what percent you have to have funded of the pension? Uh, I don't yeah, think so. I, I think just the goal. It's not that part of the discussion. But that, I think that's rates. part of our mission is to is to at least understand that and make sure it's being addressed. Yeah, yeah but that we have we have to be whatever the goal was that went from 2032 to 2040 is to be to, to catch up. Um, I'm just surprised there's that much time because in the private industry, you can well, but, like yeah, but this is a defined benefit. benefit. This is, it, it's a different now. The 401 in the, in the private side mostly, and it's a defined benefit. Well, they, they still have rules for that. Yeah, and yeah. They're expensive. Hmm. So but I think to your point initially, expensive. where there's a lot of information that we're not putting out, yes, I think it's something we should start identifying in a major way, because it is a liability. We barely made budget this time. This period, yeah, I and mean, it's like crossing a stream, and we got to this rock. Phew, we made it. And then, but where the hell's the next one? It's, 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 it's not just a, a funding issue. I mean, we made a deal with people who are depending upon these funds for their retirement. And like we, we, you got funded. Yeah, that's where you lead to bankruptcy. That's what, that, well, but that's but that's very true. The steward's correct. There is a contract that we have with we employees and it, yeah. people working. You can change it for people who are coming on. The new, yeah, new, sure. new employees. I, I totally agree. <clears throat> totally agree. But, and, but there is a contract. This lack of funding is for people who are both retired and are going to be retiring soon. I mean, if you were retired for 10 years and found out that the, your business went bankrupt and you had no, there's no money, that would be pretty devastating. Yeah. Is a new, a new so I, I guess that what I'm saying is we ought to be more I agree. part of the budgeting process and, and more aggressive. And, and well, I, this that's is a, no criticism of, no. of the, the, the retirements. Budget. Retirements are being funded. Uh, OPEB, the other post-retirement benefits, uh, have not been done. This is the first year that we've actually started that. What, what do those initial stand for? Uh, other. Other post-retirement benefits. 
like health which is like health insurance. Health insurance. That's the big one. That's the big one. So if we have a new hire today, our obligation is on paper, but we don't have any monies to provide it to, to fulfill it. Well, we need to change that. Well, I mean, what, what, what happens is that, that we we pay, I guess, something in there that is toward these these requirements, but we're so far behind uh, what the obligation is. Actuarial, I mean, that's, right. you assume yeah. it's a good number. But. What we physically have, we would run out of before that new hire we hired today would come and do. But as David said, if, he, if now we could go to a new hire and say, I'm sorry, the rules are changing. You're not gonna collect until you're 65. You're gonna contribute, you're only gonna pay 50% towards your retirement. I mean, all of those well, things. But this we is, change everything. But this is, huh? we could change everything. We could change everything. We do have a hu new human resources individual who's taking care of that with Derek, uh, looking into those things. So this is, and we can bring this up in, in subsequent meetings. I agree. But I think it's important that we have the HR person and Derek here yeah, no, to I, provide I, the discussion. I, I, but we're not going to solve so tonight. These we're not going to solve. These are all subject to collective bargaining. And they are. That's, That's correct. It makes it harder. So it makes it harder to change. No, but to Tom's point, initially, this is information we should be putting out there. Right. And that's even if they don't want to read it, but it should be out there to make the choice. Mm -hmm. And there is a discussion with when we're discussing the budget. Uh, Derek does discuss the retirement and the OPEB benefits that we are funding or not funding. So it's up to us to make sure we probe that a little bit more in depth. But I, I would, and we I would can do that. Tom is correct that most people just assume these things are going to be paid for. Without well, even um, thinking about how that's going to happen. No, well, that's kind of like Social Security. Exactly. Let's see if I can come up with some charts Except that that's, we can utilize. The U.S. government is backing that. A little bit different than the well, time of where. Well, because they got a press. <laughs> right. You're right. Well, we will do that. Uh, any other comments on, on the town meeting? I found, and it's a personal observation, I was extraordinarily disappointed when we came to the school department budget that irrespective of what we had gone through to reach the figures we had, those were our issues. As far as the school committee and the people in the audience were concerned, they were mute. Now, I saw Jeff was there, the chairman of the school committee was there, Kim and Mike. I'm not familiar with the other three members is anyone be able to confirm that they were there's there? Two, there's, there's two new ones who are just came on board. But were they present? Oh. That's my, my question. And they could have been in the audience. You wouldn't know. They could have. That's they they wouldn't have been sitting down front. So they would have been in the audience. Correct. That's why I say I'm right. not familiar with them. So I was. But the, but the budget was very new to them, and the process was they weren't involved. In right. Well, indeed. However. If their concern, and I have a disappointment in this, if their concern initially was to have the X number of dollars over and above what we were able to provide them, if they were so concerned about that, that they voted unanimously to approve it, why the hell did they get up and give some kind of impassioned plea that they needed it? These were our children. They were elected to be responsible for that particular part of our community. And they were mute. And I thought, now I have a lot of respect for Jeff. He's in passion, he's articulate, he knows what's going on. I would put him aside because we oftentimes hear from him. He is their spokesperson. He is. The others, where the hell are they? If this is so important, and I think no. it is, you bet it is. Where the well, hell are they? Where is their compassion? No, obviously. They, they desire for it. I mean, if they had a million dollar shortfall and they were going to have to do certain things that were going to compromise what they feel that the, that department should be delivering to our children, why the hell would they get up and say so? I would have more respect for them 
even though it's batting their head against the wall, that they argue that position at town meeting. At town meeting, have to accept very obviously the compromise, but to put up a fight for it, I have no fight for them. I have no but, respect for them. But if if somebody had put a hold on the school funding, then they would have had to come up, get up and support it. Um, no, they wouldn't. Dominic and I had a bet that he would uh, that they would be a uh, hold because of the transportation. They, you know, they they mm -hmm. hadn't necessarily agreed to the using the Plymouth money to the deferral of, of the charter school in Plymouth to take care of the, the back to one mile mm -hmm. walk to school business. So there were still a two two miles and they thought that was gonna be a he thought that was gonna be that a was problem. gonna be a controversial issue. Yeah. But, but it turned out it wasn't and <coughs> and actually should have been because there's a question, does everybody have a sidewalk? We do not. And that's, we do not, that's a course. serious problem. Yeah. That's a serious problem in this town. Yeah. But my being on the building committee, these people have to be considering the fact when that building is constructed, they've got a staff and an equipment. And so they should be starting to argue for those issues. And throughout, uh, well, they're not even in the ballpark. They haven't shown up. For, have they shown up for your meetings? Uh, well, you know, we've, no, we haven't had that kind of meeting, and I'm not suggesting it. My point is, we, <coughs> as far as the committee is concerned for that school, we've got to sell it on an override. And if that school committee doesn't have the respect and the proactiveness for it, we're going to lose. I'm, I've been involved in sales most of my life. I know what it takes to sell something. And if you're not proactive and you're not forward, and you don't speak up about your product, you're not going to sell it. You're not going to sell it. Yeah. It's going to lose the first time, I'll tell you anyway. Well, it, well, it, it makes. takes two or three times to get these things through. Indeed. Yep. Good possibility. But you'd like to have at least some enthusiasm to know that the very people that you're trying to support, i.e. school department system, etc., are equally in front of the, on the front lines when you're trying to argue the case. Mm -hmm. And now Mike is doing a great job, and he's the run primarily running the whole show over there. The numbers part. As far as uh, yes, also but he's also school. running the the mm -hmm. school building process. Also, um, the superintendent was designated as the chairman. Haven't heard from her since. But the whole issue, from my point of view, is these people are absent without leave. If that is something they wanted to do. They went out and got themselves elected for crying out loud, get off your duffs and advocate. They're going to have to. They're going to have to. Well, the, one of their advocates, what's his name, Silva, is it? The, uh, the, the guy that's been in, te in teaching and education for 75 years or so, I've heard, so he's, he's 75 oh. years old or so, who just retired. He retired? Yeah. yeah, and he, he has typically been the one that he and Jeff have been the one that talked to the needs of the school. Right. But someone has to take take his yeah. place yeah. and step up. But, uh, I, I mean, the committee the is so fresh. Right. Well, they've got some challenges. The, the, the other thing that I mentioned was, why don't we just have one town meeting? Because the time and effort that's going into these, even just ours to hear all these things go back and forth, is is a lot of time and I'm not sure we couldn't be doing it in other things and do better. Well, do better. Yeah. And the other part, the part, other part, just, part of the reason that we have too is that we, we really, until we close the books and have an opportunity to look and see what we really have for free cash and what's at the, what's at the end, uh, if we only have one meeting, we can't spend that until the next spring. So, it gives us the opportunity to use that money in September rather than waiting until but, but next maybe town meeting. Maybe it should be in May. I don't think it should be in May. I don't there, that's a possibility. I, I noticed several There's towns, are, line several towns are in right. May and, and so the state numbers get to be harder. Right. Um, uh, a number of towns do have their meetings in May rather yeah. than April. 
Yeah, you know, I think they moved it because of that reason. Pardon me? They moved it because of that reason. Yeah, there's I so think, much apprehension. Yeah, so there's because the legislature could care less. Right. When they finally they make their final decision. Well, and, and the turmoil it, it causes here is. I mean, I, I, I'm not confident of the, of the Massachusetts state budget <laughs> right now. Well, I don't think anyone is. They're, yeah. they're something like $400 million behind budget this quarter, is the projection. So they're, they're having issues also. Could be a lot worse than that, depending on what happens in Washington. Well, and that's, that's the big wild card. The only saving grace is historically, state aid has not been reduced after the time. Cities and towns have closed their books. But that's only historical. That's it historical. Doesn't it doesn't mean it's going to happen. No. That's true. So it's a. What, what, what can we do about health care other than. Stay healthy. Our contract. Correct. Our, our contract with the employees. The cut, that, that cost. I don't think we have too many options as alternatives that we uh, programs. Well, I, I mean, it's the, the Cadillac plan mm -hmm. versus the, well, the... There are a number of things that companies do with regard to health care, aside from switching who pays what, yeah. what kind of uh, plans are offered. Um, the Cadillac plans were going to go away under Obamacare, but it's unclear whether that's going to happen now. But uh, you can also, there are some things that take time but if you create the right incentives, uh, you know, all kinds of helpful living and things like that. So people actually use less health care as they get healthy. Uh, that's one thing that uh, people do. And you can offer incentives to people, as Derek was talking about, to get out of these very expensive plans. I mean, if you were, you know, if you're under 50, having a Cadillac plan is worthless. You're never going to use it. So you might as well put that other money in your pocket and save the town money. It, it's just, it just is an expense that doesn't get used. As people get older, then it really becomes expensive because the benefit is so dramatic. So we have to do something. Again, these, this is part of what happens, and this is part of the reason we have a, an HR person right now, to come up with those items and negotiate those, those issues mm -hmm. when the contracts come up. But as long as the contract is there, you can't arbitrarily say, nope, you can't have that insurance. Well, I think Derek had mentioned, because there's three options that they currently have. The difference between the Cadillac or the top of the line and the secondary one is minimal at best. Yeah, and in terms of benefits or cost? Cost. And well, he indicated second line. his uh, pre preference to eliminate the top tier because it's not cost effective. And as far as the employees are concerned, uh, their cost is less. And he says, whatever the difference of the two, you save what you save in the middle tier. It's worth doing that because you, if you don't use it, you save a sufficient chunk. If you do, you can use that chunk to make up whatever extra dollars you had to expend out of pocket, not having the third tier. So I think he indicated that's his preference. But of course, as you said, it's all negotiated. Yeah, it isn't easy to change things under what you're bargaining for. But other towns have done it, and we just got to keep plugging away at it. It's because it's just an enormous expense. Uh, uh, the other thing is, I think we as a finance committee meeting should meet regionally with other finance committee meetings and say, uh, how can we share services or cut down? Some of the some of the overheads that well, we have. Mm -hmm. No, there's so th there's nothing standing in the way of that. If someone wants to go and meet with Born or Wareham at their meeting, that would probably be an appropriate mm -hmm. thing to do. We, I mean, just ma introduce ourselves to them and say, "Hey, right." In uh, the mass municipal meetings that we attend, I think if we could feed feedback to tell them these are kind of seminars we like to see them present. Yeah. Right. Because they bring in some very well-informed, educated people. And <laughs> in some cases, they even, uh, other town administrators and town managers, you like to go out of there, put them in your pocket, and bring them back to here. I mean, Derek is excellent. Some of those people are astounding, the way they've, uh, they're running their towns. And uh, just kind of envious. But that's a good place for the seminars.
because they could bring in a lot of a lot of people together and a lot of expertise together to give us a, a uh, be, be very interesting. I wonder if they could bring a have a regional presentation. I think they do that, but I uh, have to get in. We'll have to find out. Uh, can you give? Can you take that on and sure. uh, contact the the Whatever association, the finance this committee, thing, yeah. right, and find out if they do have a regional one. Or we'll be interested in setting one up among the towns right in this area, because that would be a very good idea. But as in an idea sharing way, rather than just lecture. Yes. Yes. So as an assembly is. So there's some better bonding between the right. committees. And I, I got this problem, you got that problem. Right. Best practices, as we call it in the, best practices, as we call it in the manufacturing world. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Well, so I think it, 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 sometimes it's young, knowing how to do it. Some new creative right. ideas on the ship yeah. services. Well, for instance, Duxbury is now taking the second floor of their fire department and putting in a dispatch. Dispatch. In there, and they've got three other towns onto it. Well, hey guys. Right. We got uh, I don't know how many people in dispatching in in Wareham alone. They like probably the fire department and the town, the fire departments, fire departments, and, the and town, the town, EMS. Yeah, and uh, the technology is there to yes. to make it without compromising the effectiveness of it. Right. To uh, and that would to do it more efficiently. Right. And it would it would make sense to have a, a un, uniform for more than one town. I think Alan has done something for the selectmen. Mm -hmm. And he probably has some information to yes. start from. Alan Slater? Yeah, he's definitely been very, very active in state and local activities. Yeah, yeah. I asked him if I been born was having a problem. I said, okay, to go over and meet with the find it. Oh, no, you don't want to do that. <laughs> You might get well, some good ideas. Yeah, you never know. Yeah, Causing right. trouble. Well, I mean, they were having this. They were having. They were having, they were having problems. Yep, they still are. They still are. Yeah. We're not alone. Yeah. We're not alone. And Plymouth is going to be in this soup with the loss of uh, loss of power plant. plant. And, right. Yeah, and this huge fight they've got going on with this the uh, sewer part. Well, the sewer. You know, the sewer problems is. That's a fifty or sixty million dollar. Yeah, it's a legal bill. issue, isn't it? Because they've contracted out the operation of their sewer department. Well, they've got all sorts of issues with that, and then with with Pilgrim, when they close, they they lose a pilot program of ten ten million dollars a year. So they have <laughs> nobody has it easy. So they may be. I mean, they're, they're, they may they come may to be, us. They may be wow. willing to look yeah. at it more. My friend in uh, Somerset, they have two power plants. They're both coal fired. One shut down. The town went through some very serious bell timing. I mean, it's a big piece of a pie. And the other one is shutting down on the 19, right? Yes. <coughs> yep. So, I mean, we, we, we're, we're, not, we, we're not the only one with the disease. <laughs> no. No. All right. Um, recap Invoice for Gateway Printing. Kelly, have you heard anything from Derek as far as cost sharing on that? <coughs> uh, the invoice is nineteen hundred sixty dollars and fifty cents for the, the warrants, uh, and for the annual and special. No discount for the same color covers. <laughs> uh, but the finance committee budget is has approximately seventeen thousand seventeen hundred left, so we can't sign that until we. Speak with Derek, and last year the selectmen took a certain portion of it and paid it out of their budget. So we need to do the same thing. We just transferred out of our uh, reserves. No. Oh, excuse me, no. The reserve is a separate line item. Right. It's, it's not, not in ours. our budget. It's not in our budget. That's correct. Derek changed that the very first year I was here. I put it in the home. That's a mistake. Must be. <laughs> no, he has it. So uh, we can't do anything on that. All right. The, and, and I don't think Kelly is totally happy with the, the service and the quality of the gateway. Well, I know Our I'm not. I have not been. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, we may I suggest, in uh, the meantime, can we, uh, Kelly, take it upon 
find something more satisfactory to you. Can we approve this pending Derek finding the money, the rest of the money somewhere so that this doesn't go on for a long time? I mean, it'll, it'll we don't want to discuss it again. <laughs> did the work. Um, we actually have, a, we have an invoice? There is an invoice. Yes. There is an invoice that uh, we could we could vote to sign up up to fifteen seventeen hundred dollars on. So we're two hundred dollars short. We're two hundred and sixty dollars short. So where is the money coming from? Uh, it's coming from whatever's the, left in our budget. Whatever's left in the that finance would, committee. That would pretty much leave us twelve dollars. What else we use the money? Well, we never touched the reserve fund, and I'm sure he'll transfer it out of there. Or it could I'll come. I'm trying to get a hold of him this week or next, well, tomorrow or next week. All right. See what he suggests. I don't know what you have in mind in terms of the frequency of our meetings, but... Uh, but typically, we, at this point, we can meet once a month, so... So maybe we should just at least approve the amount we've got and, and, then, and yeah. let you know, so they get paid. I mean, I like them, but they didn't work. There's nothing else that might come over the transom between them? Not, not now. Okay. I mean, we have six weeks left of the fiscal year. Right. I don't foresee anything. So, we'll... Uh, we could we could go with the 1700 And then pass the difference in August. We could. Well, we can approve the seventeen hundred. Yeah, no, prove that, and then tell Gateway that. Well, and then Derek will no. find the money somewhere. In the yeah, yeah, no, I'm sure he will. But I mean, that's. Do you have the invoice with you? Yes, I do. It's all in. It's in your files. Do the All right. I, I would move that we pay seventeen hundred dollars with this invoice from Gateway Printing. All right, we have a motion. Uh, do you want to put a dollar value or just approve the uh, invoice? That way, because we don't, we... we I, mean, I think we can only approve what we have yeah. I mean, in, our, in our budget. We can't approve more than that. I, I would think if other departments and commissions did that, we'd be a little upset. Second. All right, All right. we have a motion and a second to approve the invoice up to $1,700. Okay. Any further discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, it's unanimous. So I will sign this. And dated, please, dated as well. Yes. Thank you. Uh, they relate to delivery. They are not flexible because we were hoping to do some charts with colors and all. And he's either unable or unwilling to do something like that. All right. All right. So I'll give this to Kelly at the end. And let's see. We have two. Minutes of meeting from April 5 and April 24. And I believe you've all received copies of those by email. Motion to accept April 5th as printed. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from April 5th. Any discussion? There being none, all those in favor? Aye. One, two, yes, three, four, five, and one abstention. All right. And there was a meeting that we held just prior to town meeting on April 24th. Motion to accept as printed. Do we have a second? Second. Moved and seconded. Approval of the April 24th minutes. Any discussion? Seeing none, I'll ask for a vote. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We, have, we have two abstentions. Mm -hmm. All right. 
Very good. Let's see. Any other business? In, if, if I may, uh, making reference to a budget prep is in war prep. Many of the presenters we have when we go through the review, they give us handouts. They're all on paper, they've all been typed up, they're all on computer. Now, I would hope that they have them ahead of time enough so at least, let's say on a Monday before, that Kelly can get them and email them to us so we have an opportunity to look at them. Um, I just like a, a more comfortable opportunity to look at them ahead of time, formulate some questions perhaps. Oh, I agree. Yep. Mm. We'd like to request those in, in advance. Yes. And I just but said not that. Not like two hours in advance. No. Indeed. Yeah. In, indeed. No. Right. Days in advance. I think we need to specify that. Yes. Yeah, by no later than Monday prior to the presentation. That gives us two days. With well, their playground people, that, that was quite an impressive hand up there. It was too many colored. pages to print out. <laughs> no, no, they were almost right. Like the colored one? The colored oh, indeed. It was very extraordinarily thorough. No, it's it's very nice when people, and most of the people who are coming before us have done a lot of work. Yeah. Uh, they just don't show it to us. Mm. So it's nice when someone actually shows us what they've done and don't why. Don't they need prior approval prior to putting their flyers on that table? Clear? receives them a few days before she has to approve them uh, they should have those no they should have those flyers put together uh, for right. town meeting for right. town meeting but right. they also should have them if it's going through CPC they mm -hmm. should have basically that same presentation to CPC I agree. Right. and I believe they did on on that mm -hmm. playground I think well, that's, that's right. that what they printed was a, a special thing for the damn town meeting Mm -hmm. Right. Multicolored costume. And that's, and that's, that's fine. More than a swing. Well, <laughs> all right. No, but, but you're right. The presentations that are made before the Finance Committee, and it would be nice to get those ahead of time so we can look at them yeah. and talk intelligently about the, the issues that are being brought forth. And why run that subject? I have a little burr in my craw. When the school committee did their presentation of their budget. They have us arrayed on that stage. Um, with all due respect, I will not be on that stage if, when, if next year. No, we're that's that's not a that's not a forum for a discussion of a finance committee discussion of the budget. That's an inappropriate forum for it. They're they're making their presentation and they're voting on it. The virtue of the selectmen and ourselves being on that stage suggests we are approving and doing in part of the presentation. Right, and we're we not. haven't even seen it yet. Right. No, neither have the selectmen. They have until January fifth, and they're doing this in October. Right, and so it's the whole thing is preliminary, and I, I just object. I mean, they have a nice uh, PowerPoint presentation, I like the opportunity to read it without having to try and find their thirty-two page budget. With questions I may have. No, that's that's very a good observation. It's not the appropriate place for the finance committee to be uh, when they're making their presentation. The other thing that I really hope with the new board on the on the school committee that they will make come up with a budget according to the schedule that we have in uh, have established within this town which in charter in the, in the charter yep which means they get it I believe it's in December yeah I think I believe it's, it's in December for I Derek so they did they do January, have that one day, they January, have a one, that one day meeting yeah January 5th I believe they have to deliver it to the selectmen mm -hmm. and January 25th the selectmen deliver it to us. Right. And if we can if we can follow the schedule, and it's not easy, I recognize that, but it's a lot better than what we ended up with the last several years, which is 
last minute changes and last minute adjustments to the budget and trying to balance it. Uh, because, again, the school committee, the school budget is a, a significant portion of the whole town budget. So our, it's I think, um, and I, I, I dislike the scenario that I was going to suggest, but I believe we have to take greater control of what we need to have done. Once they present it to us on January 25th, it is no longer Derek's budget, Sweckman's budget, or the school budget. It is ours as agents of town meeting. And what we demand and what we want to see is our responsibility to do so. And it's different than what we've done before because mm -hmm. we've always worked very well but I think there is sometimes we have to step aside like a manager and say, we are the manager. We're no longer best friends. We're the manager. And we have to take that, that issue. I think we might be able to progress and get some more information more easily. Like we never see the Capital Outlay Committee. Right. It's, it's, and they say, no, we don't have anything for you. It, oh, it, right. It's got to be, and they got to have four or five years ahead, too. I mean, just so that you know, or you get a sense of. And then we as the Finance Committee should know that. That's the information we should know. Yeah. Well, and we should we don't the, even impact, the impact of those things. Indeed. Right. Indeed. So, oh, very good. And, and I'll tell you, when it, if, we, if we did it and the town got used to seeing it and we'd say, remember we talked about this two years ago, if this was going to happen and this is the year that it happened and here it is. It has or has better, but I mean, I mean, Derek is trusted, and that through that trust, we're not having any. I mean, there's not much happening. Hmm. But the reports you imply, Dave and I, when we went to Mass Municipal, uh, one or two of them. What was he from? Oh, Middleborough? Not Middleborough. No, 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 no. Middleborough, but Northborough. Right. Here but it is, right here. I he mean, was putting out some extraordinary charts. Yes. Well, you can go online and pull them down anytime you want. Indeed, we can. Yeah. So you have this. It, it, <laughs> anyway. All right. Arlington is what, another one. This, yes. is, this, is, this is what Arlington does. And they have some of my favorite things where they do mm. the breakdown of the local income by month. So that you see that the parking is up, down, whatever, the field tax. Yep. And they also have what the cemetery brings in. <laughs> we don't change the goddamn cemetery thing. It's just, we should be just... No. I mean, it just shows that we're sloppy, frankly. Uh, that's another another group huh? we never see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, and I think what we sh I think what we should do is we should, uh, and this is on me, but I think for the next several meetings, we should arrange to get various groups coming in oh, uh, yes. and plan ahead, have them come in. You mentioned capital planning. I think that's one. Uh, cemetery showed up two years ago but that was the last time we've seen them. And have them come in and, and discuss what they're doing, why they're doing it, and what the financial impact of their activities is. And for, and, and for the next meeting, I would sure like to see the water pollution control people in here, because what was presented by Guy was a goddamn smokestorm, and as far as I understood it. I mean, one thing he says out, this, re this report says we're supposed to have 23 people. Now we, only, we the budget has 18. We're going to spend X on, on uh, capital items. And the review that he has, we're supposed to spend X plus some more. And what he's facing is the people who were paying the sewer, their sewer tax are the ones who are approving the budget. Right. So we're unless we're confident that that's being properly uh, costed out so that you get it paid, it's a pay-as-you-go basis, we're gonna, <laughs> there's going to be a bigger hole someplace. And he's making enough money in that operation to support 23 people. There's absolutely no reason he shouldn't be fully, fully well, manned. Or, or why, why, did, why show us he, need, he needs 23? Where did that come from? Why we, mm. did we pay somebody to tell us they need 23 when we're only going to get 18? I mean, I don't. Well, I, I believe that the 23 came from uh, state and federal mandated 
yeah. staffing yeah. Yeah. conditions. So, um, that and the fact that we're going to possibly link up with uh, Born and Plarian. Yep. And the new and outfall pipe. It, it, they've got they've got some significant things out ahead, and I and think they, they have the money. All the the number of things they have on it, they have the money to fund them. If they would take the money out of their uh, stabilization fund and fund them, they could with outside contractors instead of trying to do it in house, they could get it more done more quickly. And because of the age of the system, it really needs to be done more quickly. Yeah, there's there's, a, well, there's multiple potential surprises out there that are expensive, right? Which we're finding. And they got to get a new sewer uh, rating uh, rating system. The one they tried the EDUs they, they use now right. is there's uh, Department of Revenue in their report says an unfair billing system. Oh, Pioneer Institute, which is an independent one, is an unfair billing system. Even our consultants say it's an unfair billing system. True. Why don't they do it? Well, they don't get the, to the reports from the uh, water, water department. departments. Well, I think, well, the hell with that. Damn it. Well, we, I mean, Demand that's it. for the finance committee to say, hey, this is, we got Absolutely to. Absolutely no, I mean, it's all, the, as far as the water department, it's freedom of information. It's all public information. There's absolutely no reason they don't have it. Well, I, I, I'm <laughs> well, <laughs> things are running well. As I'm a matter of fact, in one of the comments at the last meeting of Onsen, someone questioned the fact that uh, we, the town municipal pie, was doing the billing for them. Yeah. And their More comment was, yeah. keep, keep quiet, it's a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. But if we're doing the billing, then we ought to be able to figure out but well, we don't do the billing for the water. We do the billing for the fire. Yep. And I can. Right. Do we we don't bill the water. The, no, we don't bill. They build their own water. Do we get paid for? It? Yeah, we can. We do get paid. One and a half percent of the, I believe it is, of the value of real estate that they hold. That's what we charge them. That's what we hold back when we send them or they give them their money for the fire department. Well, the, I mean, the fire department thing was an interesting result from their meeting. They, they, they moved the fire department further away from Onset than the where fire department is to Onset. I mean, it, it was yep. pretty much of a... Now, are they keeping the existing station? I, I, I just know that they cut down. Wasn't they there. said you've had an $8 million yeah, the cap, right, <laughs> cap on the thing. Right. Um, but uh, the the question is, we ought to cap it. No. Gee, we needed the. That's just took a measure when they bought that new fire engine. <laughs> that would have. They should have got one that folded. <laughs> no, there's still not enough room. That's, and that's the reason they have the. Anyway, I won't discuss that right now. Yeah. All right. No, we is need, there? We, we need to get involved in how much equipment that it's not they have. Purview, right. Unfortunately. <laughs> that's right. Let's go watch the Celtics. Well, it. it as a citizen, it's important. As a finance committee, it's not not within our purview. So there's a dichotomy right there. All right, any other business? Uh, next meeting. We should schedule another meeting next month, uh, probably in the middle of the month. Why don't we take a look at our calendars? Uh, June, about the 14th. Uh, if it matters, I'll be in Virginia that week. That's Flag Day. Um, we can Skype you in. You could. We could. <laughs> Except I'll probably be on the road that oh, night. But, uh, uh, yep. 14th uh, is fine with me. June 14th. Let's schedule it for June 14th. I wasn't going to do my sock drawer, but I can put that on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Is there any other business? And I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Very good. It is 725. Stuart, nice to see you. Good to see you. Good to see you.